Hello students, as you mean, class 9 are chapter number 7, <coughs> triangles and the current. Triangle of Ami Jamasar congruency will be chapter number 7, congruency of triangles. Amar <coughs> Jamasar may cite a congruency postulates by Silo SSS, SAS, ASAR, and HS by Silo. So, <coughs> congruency of triangles. So, it is important that you know congruency when you hear. Okay, the congruency topic to his head, the meaning to his head, Jodi Toma. At a finger DA, okay? At a circle DA, or at a circle is at a okay? Now, when these two circles, if I put the circle on this circle, if they coincide with each other, then we will say that they both are congruent. If this circle exactly fits on this circle, then we will say that both the triangle, both the circles are congruent. So generally, we will be getting two congruent circles when the radius are equal. Okay. If we draw a circle of radius 5 cm, again the other circle is of radius 5 cm, then the circles will be of equal size. Okay. Then we will say that both the circles are congruent. Okay. So for any figure, for any geometrical figure, for them to be congruent, they must have equal size. Their size must be equal. Okay. So now in this case, in this chapter, we'll be learning <coughs> about triangles. Okay. So if I give you one triangle and one more triangle, which is bigger than this, then this two, it is obvious that these two are not equal in size. Then they are not congruent. Okay. So in order to be congruent, last year we have got four postulates. Last year we have got four postulates. We got side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and RHS. That is right angle, right angle, and this is the hypotenuse. And S stands for one of the side. Okay, here A stands for side and A stands for angle. Okay, so we already got this four postulates. Now, this year we will be getting one more and it is AAS, angle, angle, side. Okay, so we will learn each of them. Okay, we will revise it again. So when we will say that two triangles are congruent by SSS. For example, if I give one triangle in this way and the other triangle also A, B, C, <coughs> P, Q, R. Okay. Now, if you are given that AB is equal to PQ, AB is equal to PQ, side BC is equal to side QR of this triangle. Side AC of this triangle is equal to side PR of this triangle. Then, since each and every side of this triangle is equal to one of the sides of the other triangle, then we will say that both the triangles are congruent according to SSS. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in case of SAS, two sides of this triangle should be equal to the to any two sides of the other triangle but the angle the angle contained between the two sides of this triangle okay and the angle contained between the two sides of this triangle must be equal isn't it last year we got so <clears throat> i hope you all remember let us suppose this side of this triangle is equal to this side of this triangle again this side of this triangle is equal to this side of this triangle okay and the angle contained between AB and BC of this triangle is what? Angle B. 
Similarly, angle contained between PQ and QR of triangle PQR is what? Q. So if the B and Q are equal, then we will say that both the triangles are congruent according to SAS. Is it clear? So it's very simple. In case of angle side angle also, let us consider two triangles. Let us consider two triangles. That is the ABC. And this is PQR. Okay. Now, in case of side angle side, the angle was between the between the two sides. Okay. The angle was between two sides. Okay. We have taken the angle which is contained between the two sides. Here also we have side between the angles. Okay. So if BC is one of the angle of this triangle which is equal to angle Q or if B is one of the angle of this triangle which is equal to Q of this triangle okay and this is another angle which is equal to this angle of this triangle and the side which is contained between these two angles is what BC is equal to this angle this side of this triangle then we will say that both the triangles are congruent by ASA. Okay. So, in ASA, the side should be between two angles. Okay. Now, if you are given that, if you are given that, this side is equal to this side, then we cannot say that they are congruent by AS. Okay. Because here it is ASA, but the other one it is what? AAS. Is it clear? The side must be between two angles. Okay. Now comes RHS. In case of RHS, okay, both the triangles must be right angle triangle. Both the triangles must be right angle triangles. A, B, C, P, Q, R. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we can see here both the triangles. In both the triangles, we have one right angle, so they are right angle triangle. Now, <clears throat> clearly it can be observed that we have right angle in both the triangles. Okay. Now, if the hypotenuse of both the triangles are equal, if AC and PR are equal, okay. <clears throat> And one of the side, one of the side of this triangle is equal to one of the side of the one of the remaining side of this triangle. These two sides are remaining, no? so it may be either equal to this, or this may be either equal to this, or this may be either equal to this. Okay, then we will say that both the triangles are congruent by RHS because because we have right angle in both, we have hypotenuse equal in both. And we have one side equivalent both the triangles. Is it clear? So these two triangles are equal, are congruent by RHS. Is it clear? <coughs> okay, I am repeating once again. Both the triangles are congruent just because we have right angle in both. Okay, we have right angle in both. We have hypotenuse also equal in both. And we have one more side of this triangle equal to one of the side of this triangle. So we got by RHS both the triangles are congruent okay now this year we are getting AAS also okay in this case in this case if I give you one triangle if I give you one triangle okay uh, two triangles sorry ABC and PQR Okay. Now, if this angle of this triangle is equal to this angle of this triangle, okay. If this angle of this triangle is equal to this angle of this triangle, and this side of this triangle is equal to this side of this triangle, then we will say that both the triangles are congruent by AAS. Okay. So we can say by AAS. Both the triangles are both the triangles are congruent. 
in this case also we have AAS. Clear? Now, if you are given that this angle is equal to this angle, angle C is equal to angle R, and AC is equal to QR. AC is equal to QR. Then it is they are not congruent according to AAS because in this case we have AAS, AAS, but here we have ASK. Okay, now again, <coughs> if you are given that <coughs> angle B is equal to angle R, okay, angle B is equal to angle R, angle C is equal to angle Q, and AC equal to PQ. In this case also, we have according to AAS, 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 both the triangles are congruent. Okay, hmm? alright. Now, <clears throat> we should remember one more important point regarding congruency. If two triangles are congruent by any of this postulate, if <clears throat> two triangles are congruent by any of this postulate, then the corresponding corresponding parts will be equal. So these parts may be either sides or angles. Okay. Now if I if I say that triangle ABC ABC is congruent to triangle PQR PQR okay by SAS. Let us suppose this side of this triangle is equal to this side of this triangle. This side of this triangle is equal to QR of this triangle. Angle B of this triangle is equal to angle Q of this triangle. Then we will say that both the triangles are congruent by SAS. Now, if both the triangles are congruent, then what are the remaining angles of this triangle? We have this angle and this angle left. And this also we have angle P and angle R left. Isn't it? Hmm? In order to prove these two as congruent, we already used these angles. No? Angle B and angle Q we have already used. From this triangle, angle A and angle C is left. From this triangle, angle P and angle R is left. Okay. Now, the angle which is corresponding to angle A or from the other triangle is what? P. Similarly, from this triangle, if this, uh, the corresponding angle of C is what? R. These two also will be equal to each other. Okay. So, angle A will be equal to angle P. Okay. Angle C will be equal to angle R. Understood? Is it clear? So, these two triangles will be congruent. When these two triangles will be congruent, then the remaining angles will be also equal. The corresponding angles also will be equal. Is it clear? Alright. So, <clears throat> in case, if, if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR again by SAS let us suppose this side AB is equal to PQ BC is equal to QR angle B is equal to angle Q okay then we cannot say that angle A is equal to angle R no angle A the angle corresponding to A is what P okay so this will always be equal to this angle is it clear similarly side AC side AC of this triangle will be equal to side PR of this triangle. Is it clear? Is it clear? So, corresponding parts may be either sides or angles. In this case, AC and PR are sides. Okay? Now, <coughs> corresponding sides will be equal only when we prove that the two triangles are congruent. Okay? Let me show you one more example. To be very clear, if I prove the two triangles are congruent by RHS, RHS, okay, that is BABC, that is the PQR, okay, now 
This angle is equal to this angle. Both are 90 degree. The hypotenuse are equal. And one of the side is equal. Okay. Then according to R, H and S, both the triangles are congruent to each other. Now, the angles, the angles which is remaining here are angle A and angle C. Now, angle A will be equal to angle, which angle? It will be equal to angle B. Angle C will be equal to angle R of this triangle. Is it clear? Understood? So, since they are corresponding angles, they also will be equal. Since triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR by RHS. Okay. So, the remaining angles or sides will also be equal when those two triangles will be congruent to each other. Here, in this case, AB will be equal to PQ because these two triangles are congruent. Is it clear? So, <clears throat> we'll start the examples here. We'll start the examples which are given here. In page number 136, we have one example. Triangle 
AOD and triangle POC. Okay. OA is equal to OB. It is already given. Number two. <coughs> angle AOD is equal to angle BOC. Why? It is vertically. They are vertically opposite angles. And in number three, we have OD equal to OB. Sorry, OC. This was also given. Okay. Therefore, we can say that triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC by SAS. Okay. Because they are side, they are angles and they are sides. Okay. Alright. So the first one we have done. Now we have to prove that AD is parallel to BC. Okay, we have to prove that AD is parallel to BC. Okay, alright. Now, as I told you, after proving that both the triangles are congruent, we can say that corresponding angles or corresponding sides are equal to each other. Okay, now, from this triangle, angle A, the corresponding angles, okay, the angle corresponding to A, from this triangle, with that triangle will be 1B, isn't it? We cannot say that A is equal to C, okay? A will be equal to B, according to the pattern which is given here, see? A will be equal to B, understood? Is it clear? So, we have to write the pattern in that way. We cannot write triangle AOD is congruent to triangle COB. We have to write triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC. Then only we can say that angle A will be equal to angle B. Why they are equal? Because they are corresponding angles of both the congruent triangles. Okay, both the triangles are congruent. So, they are corresponding angles. Okay, so now we can clearly see. Okay, we can take out AD and BC from this figure. And we can see here that AB is joined. AB is joined. Isn't it? Now what we got? We got this angle and this angle equal to each other. Okay? Now tell me these two angles. In the previous chapter we got these two angles are what angle? Alternate angles. They are alternate angles formed by transversal AB on AB and BC. Isn't it? Now, if this transversal was not there, then we cannot say that they are equal. These two angles will not exist. They have existed just because we have drawn one transversal. Okay, on AB and BC. Now, if these two angles are equal, then we can say that AB is parallel to BC. According to <coughs> converse of alternate angles axiom if you have not understood if you have not understood then go to the previous chapter the <coughs> uh, axiom is properly explained in that book okay or you can go to my lines and angle part okay line chart, the explanation of lines and angles okay now <coughs> Now, converse means what? The reverse of alternate axiom, alternate angles axiom. The main axiom was if two lines are parallel, if, if I consider the same one, if BC is parallel to AD and AB is a transversal, then these two angles will be equal. Okay? They will be equal and they are known as alternate angles. Now, the converse will be if these two angles are equal, then they will be parallel. Okay, because when they were parallel, they were equal. Now, if these two are equal, these two angles are equal, then they will be parallel. Okay, so now <clears throat> for number two, we have to write since triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC by CPCT 
by CPCT we can say that <coughs> by CPCT we can say that angle OAD is equal to angle OBC okay now OAD in place of OAD can we write BAD see OAD BAD both are the same angle isn't it so we can write angle BAD here similarly OBC in place of OBC can we write ABC we can write so we will write here A B C ok now you see here B A D is this angle and A B C is this angle and both are what and they are what alternate angles formed by which transversal A B on A D and B C so A D will be parallel to B C so we don't have to write so long we just have to write therefore by the converse of alternate angles axiom by the converse of alternate angles axiom we have AB parallel to BC is it clear so we have to write this otherwise in place of this in place of this we can write since <coughs> angle BAD and angle ABC are alternate angles formed by transversal formed by transversal AB on AB and BC therefore AD parallel BC so in place of in place of this we can write this also this will be longer so it is better we write this only ok after writing this you write this or after writing this you write this this is up to you ok is it clear? Alright. So pause it for a while and copy this whole. Okay. All these are not required. This is not required. <clears throat> this figure is already given in the book. Okay. Is it clear? So we'll start the next ex next example. Okay. We'll start example number two. Example number two. Now, this is also a very interesting question. We are given that AB is a line segment. AB is what? AB is a line segment. Okay. And it is given that there is a line L. There is a line L. I told you already, last year I told you already that a line is always represented by small letters okay it is always represented by small letters here in this case we are representing this line by small l okay all right so it is given that <coughs> this line is bisecting ab perpendicularly okay it is dividing ab equally that means this half this half is equal to this half and at the same time, L is perpendicular to AB also. Okay. Is it clear? Now, let us suppose line L bisects AB at point C. Line L bisects AB at point C. Okay. <clears throat> and now, another point P. There is a point P on line L. Can you see there is a point P on line here? Done? Now we have to prove that we have to prove that this P point is equidistant from A as well as from B. 
Okay. Now, if there are two points, okay, if there are two point, and we have to prove that this point is equal from this and this. Let this be A, let this be B, and let this be, let this be C. If you have to prove that C is equidistant from A and B, what we have to do? We have to prove that AC and BC are equal. AC and BC are equal. Okay. So in this case also, what we have to prove? We have to prove that AP and BP are equal. Okay. If AP and BP are equal, then we can say that P will be equidistant from A as well as from B. Clear? It's very simple. Now, <clears throat> so since L is perpendicular by sector of AB, then we can say that both the angles are 90 degree. Since they are perpendicular, since L is perpendicular to AB, this angle and this angle will be equal. And since it is bisecting also, we can say that AC will be equal to BC. Okay, now in both this triangle, we have a common side also. The common side is what? CP. Common side is CP. So we can say that both the triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Is it clear? So now <clears throat> after proving that both the triangles are congruent, can we say that AP and BP will be equal by CP, CP? Yes. If two triangles are congruent, then the remaining sides, the corresponding sides will be equal. Okay. Alright. So, the solution is already given. But, uh, try to do it by yourself. Okay. The previous one I have done. This one you try it by yourself. Okay. Whatever is given in the book, you just write down as it is in the given condition. After that, what we have to do? We have to write... In the two proof section, in the two proof section, you have to write AP equal to BP. Okay, or we can write P is equidistant from A and what? B. Okay, so for that what we have to do, we have to prove that both the triangles are congruent. We have to prove that what we have to prove? Triangle ACP is congruent to is congruent to triangle BCP. Okay, see I have written ACP. The other triangle you don't write as PCP. ACP then BCP. Clear? Hmm? So both the triangles are congruent. We have to prove why? SAS and finally by CPCP AP will be equal to BP and then we can say that finally after getting by CPCT AP equal to BP we can say that P is equal to sum from A and B is it clear so do it by yourself and send me okay all right <coughs> now let us proceed to the next example. Yeah. Example number three, page number one forty one. <coughs> page number one forty one, example number three. Okay. So here, here it is given that A B is parallel AB is parallel to CD AB is parallel to CD we have to read the question carefully okay and uh, O is the midpoint of AB so obviously we have to join AD AD we have to join now we will mark the midpoint O of AD AD is the midpoint of Sorry, O is the midpoint of AD. Now, we will join OC and we will extend up to B. Okay? Alright. Now, what we have to prove? 
we have to prove that triangle AOB, triangle AOB is equal to triangles DOC. AOB is equal to DO is congruent to DOC. See in the book also it is given in that pattern. It's not given AOB congruent COD. Is it given like that? It's not given like that. It's given in this way. OAB is congruent to triangle DOC. Okay. Sorry. Um, AOB is equal to DOC. Okay. All right. Now after that we have to prove that O is the midpoint of BC also. Okay. It was not given. We have to prove it. Okay. You have to prove that O is the midpoint of BC. It can be done after proving that OB is equal to OC. When we prove that OB is equal to OC, then obviously O will be the midpoint of BC. Okay. For that, what we have to do? We have to prove that both the triangles are congruent by using any of the postulate. Okay. So let us see which postulate we have to use here. <coughs> now, already, Already we are given that AB is parallel to CD. AB is parallel to C. Then can we see that this angle is equal to this angle? See carefully. It is given that AB is parallel to CD. AB is parallel to CD and AD is the transverse. We can see it clearly here. Okay, can you see if I rub this, then I think we can clearly see the transverse of AD cutting AB and CD. Okay, so let me draw it once again. So we can see here, I have taken this figure out here AB and CD and the transverse. Of. It was given that AB is parallel to CD, then this angle will be equal to this angle. As I told you here, this angle will be equal to this angle. Is it clear? Now, are they equal? Are they equal? Yes, they are what? Vertically opposite angles. So they also will be equal. Now we were given that O is the midpoint of AD. O is the midpoint of AD. Then, I think, OA and OD will be equal for, for any line segment. If the midpoint is given, then that midpoint will be dividing the line segment equally. It will be bisecting the line segment. So here it was given already that O is the midpoint of AD. Then we can say that AO will be equal to OD. Clear? Alright. I think we have completed now. See this triangle and this triangle, are they congruent now? Angle, side, angle. According to angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, both the triangles are what? congruent. Now if both the triangles are congruent, now can we finally say that OB will be equal to OC? If OB is equal to OC, then we can say that O is the midpoint of BC. Okay, it's very clear, very simple, no need to worry about, okay, very simple. Alright, so now, the, uh, the given conditions you write from the book itself and whatever we have to prove are also given in the book. So you write it as it is and the solution is also given, okay, solution is also given and here in this uh, SAS is not used. AAS is used. Okay, AAS is used. So now uh, we could have done by using that also. Okay, how we will do? In, in place of this angle, in place of this angle, okay, we could have used this angle also. Isn't it? Here in this case, I use AD as a transverse cell. We could have used BC also as a transversal, isn't it? We, can, we could have used BC also as transversal. If BC is a transversal, then this will be equal to this, isn't it? Hmm? So, in the book, these two angles are used. 
and they are vertically opposite angles and these two sides are equal because O was the midpoint of AD. Isn't it? Now, in this case, according to angle, angle side, angle, angle side, both the triangles are congruent. Isn't it? If they are congruent, then we can say again that OB will be equal to OC. It's very simple. Okay. We could have done, we can do by SAS as well as by using AAS. It's very simple. Okay. Alright. So, you try this by yourself. Till then, we'll start the exercise. Okay. Alright, let's start the exercise. <clears throat> now, let's start the exercise. Exercise 7.1. Number 1. In quadrilateral ACBD, ACBD, the figure is already given in the book. A, C, B, D. Okay. So in the book, A, B is joined. Let me join it. Okay. Alright. Now, we are given that A, C is equal to A, B. Okay. And line segment A, B. Okay. Now, before joining it, in this quadrilateral, how many angles are there? Four angles are there, no? Angle A, angle D, angle B, angle C. Four angles are there. Okay. Now, angle A, okay, angle A is bisected by AB. This whole angle is bisected by AB. That means what? The whole angle is divided equally. Equally. If this whole angle was 50 degree, then each of them will be 25 degree, 25 degree. Understood? So it is given that AB by 6 angle A. That means this angle and this angle will be equal. Okay? Now, what we have to prove? We have to show that triangle ABC, triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle A, B, D. I told you, if I go in this way, then the other triangle also we have to write in this way. We cannot write in this way. Okay, so A, B, C is congruent to triangle A, B, D. Is it clear? Hmm? Alright, so now let's start. We can clearly see here, these two triangles will be congruent. Why? <clears throat> if you compare both this triangle, AC of this triangle is equal to AD of this triangle. Again, this angle, okay, this angle, this angle of this triangle is equal to this angle of this triangle. And I think there is one common side for both the triangles. What is that? AB is the common side, isn't it? So, I think both the triangles are congruent by SAS. Isn't it? AB is the common side. So you can see here in this triangle, which side we have used? AC and AB and the angle between them. In this triangle also, AB, AB and the angle between them are equal. Okay? Uh, we have used those uh, sides and angles. So both the triangles are congruent by SAS. Okay? So let's start. So whatever is given in the book, is as right as it is. Okay? And to show also is given, okay. And finally, we are asked one more question: what can, what can you say about BC and BD? BC and BD also will be equal. Can you tell me why? BC and BD will also be equal, just because, just because both the triangles are congruent, they will be equal by CPCT. Okay. All right. So let's start. <coughs> So, the given part, what is given? AC is equal to AD. Okay? And it is given that AB by 6. Angle A. Okay? What we have to show? We have to 
show that we have to show that triangle ABC is equal to is congruent to triangle ABD. Okay. Now let me check those two triangle. In triangle ABC and triangle ABD. <coughs> In triangle ABC and triangle ABD, AC is equal to AD. It is already given. I told you this angle. This angle. How you will name this angle? How you will name this angle? See what is this? What which what angle is this? C A B. Okay. So angle C A B will be equal to will be equal to <coughs> D A B. See C A B. If you write then another angle you have to write in this way D A B. We could have written B A D also, no problem, but it will be your confusion. Go with accordingly systematically, okay? Why? Because A B bisects angle A. After that, the third one. What is the common sign here? A B equal to A B. Sometimes we write A B equal to B A. No? So in some of the questions, we will be writing A B equal to B A. Okay, but in this case we will be writing AB equal to AB. So how to know whether we have to write BA or AB? You can check it here. Okay, you can check it here. See how it is written. AB, AB. Then we write AB, AB. Okay, in some questions it will be given in this way. Triangle ABC, triangle BAD. It may be given in this way also. Then you see AB, BA. Okay, so by looking at here itself, we can easily come to know what to write. Okay, so in this case we'll write AB equal to AB, that is common. Is it clear? So both the triangles are congruent. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABD by what? SAS. Therefore, by CPCD. By CPCT, what we can say? We can say that BC is equal to BD. Is it clear? So this chapter is very, very easy. Okay? Very, very easy. You just have to uh, practice it regularly. Without practice, we cannot do anything. Okay? Without practice, no one can do anything. You have to practice a lot. And there is an advantage that you can repeatedly see my video every time and then every now and then you can check just to make your concept clear. Okay, now if you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section also regarding any questions. If you have any doubt, you just comment to me. Okay, is it clear? And not only doubts, if I did any mistake while explaining, you can uh, correct me. Okay, since I am new on YouTube, so you all have full permission to correct me. I'll be very, very happy. Okay? Okay. Till then you copy this. So, me, idea. <clears throat> Question number two. Cool. Question number two. The Question number two. Ki asa sound. Achha. Question number two ki kiya hai swa? ABCD is a quadrilateral. ABCD ABCD is a quadrilateral hai. ABCD is a quadrilateral. Aro yaad koi say AD is equal to BC. AD is equal to BC. Or DAB or CBA. DAB. A angle to RCBA. Okay. DAB is equal to angle CBA. That is given. Now we have to prove that triangle ABD, triangle ABD, so we have to join BD. Triangle ABD is congruent to triangle BAC. BAC, so we have to join AC. 
Okay. Hmm. All right. So now, <clears throat> after proving the first one, that is triangle ABD and uh, BAC are congruent to each other, we can easily prove the other two. Okay. <clears throat> the other two can be proved by CPCT. Okay. So now let us prove that triangle BAB. Triangle B. Let me try once again. I have taken, I will take out this triangle BAB outside. B A D. And the other one is So I have taken triangle DAD here and triangle ABC here. Okay. Alright. So now <clears throat> we'll compare both the triangles now. Already it was given that AD is equal to BC. AD is triangle ABD and BC is in triangle ABC. Again we were given that DAB is equal to CBA. It is given already. Okay. Now I think AB is common for both the triangles. Can we see? We can see clearly here. Both the triangles, this triangle and this triangle. Okay. Both lie on the same base AB. It lies on the same side AB. Okay. So we can say that AB is common for both the triangles. Now, are these two congruent? Yes, by S, A, S, S, A, S, both the triangles are congruent. Okay, it's very simple. <clears throat> so now, in number two, the given part and two show part you write it by yourself. I will directly start the solution. Okay, in triangle ABD and triangle BAC. AD is equal to BC, it is already given angle DAB is equal to angle CAB, sorry CBA, this is also given, this is also given and number 3 AB equal to BA, okay I told you AB equal to BA then it is common, common side. Okay, so now both the triangles are congruent by SAS. Okay, both the triangles are congruent by SAS. So, this was number one. In number two, what we have to see? We have to see that BD equal to AC. Now you see here, if these two triangles are congruent, then BD and AC will be equal by CPCT. BD will be equal to AC by CPCT. Okay. So since triangle ABD is congruent to triangle BAC by CPCT, what we can say? We can say that <coughs> we can say that. BD is equal to AC. Okay. The third one also it will be same. Since triangle ABD is congruent to triangle BAC, then we can say by CPCT that <coughs> angle ABD will be equal to angle BAC. Actually, we don't have to write this again and again, okay? This one. But for some reason, we have to write down this also. Okay? Alright. So, in this way, we have done question number two. Okay? Pause it for a while and copy it. <clears throat> so, till then, we'll start the next.
Now, the next question is number three. <clears throat> Here it is given that there is a line segment AB. There is a line segment AB. And AB and BC. AB and BC are equal perpendiculars. AD and BC are equal perpendiculars. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here C and D is also joined. CD is joined and they intersect each other at O. Okay. It was given that AD and BC both are perpendicular on the same side AB. Okay. And CD is joined to intersect AB at O. Now, we have to show that CD bisects AB. That is, we have to prove that AO equal to OB. Okay. Hmm. We have to prove that AO equal to OB. Now, to prove that OA equal to OB, if we prove that both the triangles are concurrent, then easily we will get OA equal to OB by CPCT. Isn't it? So, what we have to do? We have to prove both these triangles are Concurrent. Clear? Alright. <clears throat> now, can we say that this angle is equal to this angle? Yes, because they are vertically opposite to each other. Yes, right. Again, <clears throat> this angle will be equal to this angle because both are 90 degree. And this side is equal to AD. It is already given. Okay, so we can say that both the triangles are congruent by A, A, S, angle, angle, side. Okay, so since both are congruent by A, A, S, angle, angle, side, A, O will be equal to B, O. That means what? C, D has bisected A, B. Clear? So, write down. <coughs> so, in triangle, in triangle OBC and triangle OAD, in triangle OBC and triangle OAD, angle BOC will be equal to AOD, angle AOD, find their vertically opposite angles. Number two, angle OBC is equal to angle OAD. Why? Because both are 90 degree. And the third one. <coughs> BC is equal to AD. This is already given in the question. Okay. Alright. So now triangle OBC will be concurrent to triangle OAD by what? A a S. Therefore, by CPCT, what we got? We can see that OB equal to OA. OB equal to C, OB equal to OA. Therefore, CD by six. CD by six AB. Okay, it's very clear, very simple. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so pause it for a while and uh, copy it. Till then, we'll do the next number four. Try to rewind it again and again, okay, so that you understand better. <clears throat> So at least the advantage we can take. If I explain you live, then it is not possible. Okay. If you come to the class and uh, we cannot, I cannot repeat again and again. Okay. The same thing, it is not possible. Okay. In the class. So now let's start number four. <clears throat> In question number four. L. And M. Okay. L, M. They are parallel. Okay. L and M are parallel. Again, there are two more lines. There are two more lines. 
Just can you see? It is given as P and Q. They are also parallel. Okay. So it is given that A is parallel to M and P is parallel to Q. Okay. And they are intersecting each other at A, B, C and D. Okay. Then tell me A, B, C, D will be a parallelogram. Isn't it? A, B, C, D will be a parallelogram. Why? According to definition of parallelogram, if two lines, parallel lines, intersects another two parallel lines, then the figure which is enclosed, the figure which is formed inside will be a parallelogram. Okay? When two parallel lines intersect another parallel lines, two parallel lines, then the figure which is formed inside is known as a parallelogram. Okay? Alright. So now in the figure, AC is joined. AC is joined. <clears throat> what we have to prove? We have to prove that triangle ABC, ABC is congruent triangle CDA. Okay, hmm? all right. Now, <clears throat> in order to be congruent, okay, in order to be congruent, it should be either <clears throat> of the form SSS or ASA or SAS. Okay, let us see. It may be AAS also. Okay, now let us see. Let us see. In this case, okay, it is given that P is parallel to Q. P is parallel to Q and AC is the transversal. If P is parallel to Q, okay, P is parallel to Q and AC is like this, no? AC is the transversal. Then this two will be equal because they are alternate angles. Isn't it? Similarly, I think <clears throat> so this angle is equal to this angle. Let me show you this one first. Okay. Similarly, can we say that these two are equal? Yes. Why? Because L was parallel to M. If L is parallel to M and if AC is transversal, then this will be equal to this. See? L is parallel to M. AC is the transversal. Then these two angles will be equal. Yes, sir. Now, let us prove that these two triangles are congruent. It is very simple. Okay? In triangle ABC and ABC and CDA, this angle of this triangle is equal to this angle of this triangle. Yes, sir. And this angle of this triangle is equal to this angle of this triangle. And I think this is a common side. AC is the common side. Isn't it? AC is the common side. So, by ASA, ASA, both the triangles are common. Okay? Alright. <clears throat> so, uh, write down, given, L parallel M, and P parallel Q. Okay? We have to show that. What we have to show? We have to show that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. Done? Okay. So now, <coughs> since L parallel M and AC is the transversal. So if L is parallel to M, this was L and this is M. Okay? Then this angle will be equal to this angle. How will we write this angle? DAC. Angle DAC is equal to, see, DAC will be equal to BCA. B, C, A. Why? Because they are alternate angles. 
question number one. Okay. Similarly, similarly, since P parallel Q and AC is the transverse cell, therefore, what do you get? <clears throat> if P is parallel to Q and AC is a transverse cell, I think we got these two angles, no? These two angles we got, that is angle BAC, okay? BAC will be equal to angle BCA, okay? So angle BCA will be equal to angle BAC. The reason is same, so we have written similarly, okay? Alright, now let us prove. In triangle, ABC in triangle ABC and triangle CDA <coughs> BCA equal to ABC okay from let us the equation to from one Okay. Number two, what is the common side? AC. No? So AC equal to what? CA. Common. Number three, <coughs> what is equation two? BCA equal to BAC. But we have to write BAC equal to BCA. Why? I told you already the parts of the respective triangles should be in one side. Okay, ABC I have written here now. BCA, angle BCA, AC and angle BAC are from this triangle. CDA, ADC and CA are also from this triangle. So, parts of this triangle has to be written in the left hand side. Parts of this triangle has to be written in the right hand side. Okay, so now we can say that both the triangles are both the triangles are common by A S A. Is it clear? Okay. So today I will be uploading only up to this. Okay. Tomorrow I will proceed from question number 5. Okay. And if possible I will proceed the examples of examples before exercise about. Okay. So if you have any doubt you just ask me. Okay. In the comment. Or in WhatsApp also you can send me your questions. Yeah.